Hi, this is Nicholas Yock, a registered education and migration agent from Pathway to Odds. Uh, today, I'm gonna to discuss with you a question we are asked a lot. Basically, how many points do I need for PR? Okay, well look, this question, you know, it's kind of like how long is a piece of string? There's no definitive answer for it. It depends on a lot of different factors, such as, you know, what occupation you're applying with. Are you currently working in the industry in Australia? Are you living in a regional area, etc.? Um, look, we have had some applicants receive an invitation with as low as 55 points, plus 15 points for regional migration. Uh, we've also had some of our clients who have just been unlucky with 85 points and not been able to get an invitation. So when you're talking about points and the points test, you're referring to the different general skilled migration visas. So the points test only refers to the general skilled migration visas. So these visas include the skilled independent, subclass 189, the state nominated, subclass 190, the skilled regional, subclass 491, or the family sponsored, subclass 491. So there'll be you know, links to the different visas specifically below. Um, so you can check those out in more detail below. So what visa requires the highest points? Well, look, the skilled independent, subclass 189, and the family sponsored, subclass 491, always require the highest points. And these are because those visas, the skilled independent, subclass 189, and the family sponsored, subclass 491, are only points tested. That's really the only thing that matters. So they don't take into other factors. So the points that you need um, to receive one of these invitations are actually published each month by immigration. Um, so you can check that out on the immigration website. Currently, I think you need 90 to 95 points to get an invitation for one of these visas. So why is it so high? Well, look, immigration has recently decreased the number of you know, um, invitations being offered for the skilled independent and the family sponsored. Um, and the supply, or the demand rather, far outweighs the supply. So the points you need are just pushed up really high. Consequently, immigration is also pushing a lot of the migration onto the individual states and territories and giving them a lot more freedom to invite applicants, you know, to apply for the state or skilled nominated subclass 190 or the skilled regional subclass 491. So which visas require the lowest points? The state nominated subclass 190 and the skilled regional subclass 491 require the lowest points. Um, recently, as I said before, we've had some people receive an invitation for the 190, you know, with as low as 70 points and, you know, pretty much 55 points plus 15 points for state migration for the 491. The points that you require to receive an invitation for these visas varies from state to state and each state may have some different requirements to apply for it. Um, so just to give you sort of an overview, recently we had an invitation with the points below. So, you know, he was 38, so he had 25 points for age. He'd studied uh, commercial cookery in Australia, so he only got 10 points for his qualification. Didn't bother doing an English or couldn't do the English. Uh, he studied in Australia, so he got five points. He worked in Australia for one year, so he got five points and he was single, so he got 10 points. So he only had 55 points. Um, Fortunately, you know, we submitted the regional, the request, or the expression of interest requesting regional nomination. Uh, the state picked it up, gave him an extra 15 points, and he was actually able to apply for the skilled regional visa with that. Uh, so what factors are important to applying for state nomination? Well, look, the states don't always care just about how high points you have. They care about things like, are you living and working in the state? Is your state on the state or regional occupation list? What's the demand for your specific um, you know, occupation in the state? You know, what other applicants have applied in the state? You know, how do they compare to you? Do you have a genuine commitment to living and working in the state? You know, and things like, do you have an offer of employment and stuff like that? So as mentioned, for the skilled independent and the family sponsored, they only, immigration only care about points. No other factors are considered. However, for state migration, it focuses on the demand of the individual states. So each state, you know, will have a different demand for individual occupations. So quite often applicants with lower scores will receive invitations for certain occupations compared to applicants with really high scores, such as engineering um, or IT and those professions with really high scores might not get an invitation um, just because, you know, there's not that much demand. Or 
there are also already a lot of other applicants applying. So what are some recent trends? Um, look, obviously, currently at the moment, it's a, lot, it's a lot more difficult for applicants offshore outside Australia to get any invitation. Um, many states are generally only offering state sponsorship for people living and working in the state. Um, additionally, many states will have their state nomination, you know, open and close, you know, sporadically throughout the year. So I often say quite often it's more important when you submit your expression of interest, so having more time on your side than the total number of points you have. Uh, please note, if your occupation is on the state list and you do meet the state requirements, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you'll receive an invitation. Um, states do not publish what points you know, were needed to apply for certain occupations. It's a competitive process and there's no set waiting time. It's just rather like a pool of applicants that the states get to choose from. And they might choose certain applicants with lower points if they deem them, you know, um, highly you know, relevant or, or important to their state. Um, look, so that should give you a general overview. I hope you got a little bit of information out of that. Uh, if you do want to talk to someone about your specific situation, feel free to contact Pathway to Oz. Um, all our details are below. Thank you.